How's it going beautiful Hognos community? Once again Angry Hogs out with another video. The question and play is are leucistic Hognos a dead end morph? Leave a comment in the section below. Let me see what you think and enjoy the video. Let's get right into it. So let's go over basic terminology. What is leucism? Leucism is a recessive gene. You need two alleles, one from mom, one from dad in order to have a visual leucistic so it's a recessive gene in the picture in the right you'll see the phenotype and what i mean by phenotype is a visual leucistic you'll notice it's an all white snake and it doesn't show any pattern visually uh, nowhere from the head down to the tail or anything in the belly as well you won't see a pattern in a leucistic visual so just because you can't see a pattern, it doesn't mean it doesn't have a pattern. It very well does have, uh, does have a pattern. But the way that leucism acts, it impacts the melanin production. So it doesn't let the, the carotene of the scales uh, fully develop that pigmentation. So it is an abnormality, but it doesn't affect the health of the animal. Um, it just affects the scale coloration and not, be, and not being able to show uh, any pattern. With that being said, you want to treat the leucistic hognose like any other recessive gene. Uh, stay away from inbreeding. And if you do have leucistic or you do plan on getting leucistic in your collection, uh, be sure to practice uh, safe outcrossing. So now we get into the history part of leucistic hognoses. Uh, leucistic uh, hognose was originated in Colorado unfortunately it's illegal without uh, a permit or a license from the Colorado Fish and Wildlife to own keep and breed hognose so the person who discovered the gene back in early 2000 like about 2006 was obviously overridden by uh, the Colorado State uh, State Wildlife uh, Park and Wildlife Rangers they went into their home his home and basically took his leucistic collection away they sold him off to to the st uh, louis zoo and after a while the st louis zoo uh circulated them back to the hobby so that's why we have uh, leucism and a cool fact is that they were they were uh founded in colorado which is my home state so that's a big point for the state uh that doesn't allow hog nose keeping unfortunately so there's a big question in the hognose community is is leucism is a leucistic hognose a dead end morph so you see a picture here once again the underside belly of the hognose is all white it almost has like a yellow tint to it uh the top side of the of the snake is is pure right uh white without any any pattern or any other type of coloration the eyes appear to be a normal brown uh, coloration so that's what leucism is it's an, it's an abnormality in the scales and the question that i'm going to try to answer uh, for you guys is is it really a denon morph what's happening what's going on uh, is it worth investing into it what's what should i do so let me just start off by saying there's no other gene that will give you the results that leucism will Yes, you can do albino, you could do exanthic, uh, both of them are recessive and it'll give you a snow. You could uh, even throw in some superconda into that snow, uh, make some super yetis, which is a superconda. It's a patternless uh, a body, but you still have the pattern in the head, right? It's a superconda, albino exanthic, that's a super yeti, it's basically a superconda snow, and but you still have that pattern in the head you still have some kind of uh, pigmentation uh, coming through especially if you add like a purple line or something like that uh, I don't want to ramble too much about it but in reality there's no other gene that's gonna give you the result of a leucistic so it's very unique in its own way we have T negative genes we have T positive genes hypermelanistic we have incomplete dominant dominant genes polygenic genes but there's no other way to achieve uh, the visual leucistic without having the leucistic gene in your collection. We have a lot of gray snakes, we have a lot of yellow snakes, we have a lot of red snakes, we have a lot of orange snakes, but those are not white leucistic snakes. Um, so that's in itself is what gives it the edge and in my opinion um, makes it really unique and stand out. As of now, the only thing as a hobby that we've observed is getting super arctic into leucism 
So Super Arctic, if you don't know, it's a, it's a two copies of Arctic. Um, if you have an Arctic from mom and Arctic from dad, then you can have a Super Form, which is a Super Arctic. So the Super Arctic Leucistic, if you if you observe the picture that's on the screen right there, you'll see at a close up uh, image, you'll see how the scales almost uh, seem to be translucent and it's got some few white scales that are not as translucent that you can compare like if you see the scales right underneath its eye there's about two of them that are right next to each other that are very different from all the other ones around its head if you if you if you if you go down the lateral side of the snake you also see that same two scales that are a uh, pure white instead of that translucent so that translucent is going to give you that almost uh, see-through um, image it's going to give you that that transparent quality that a leucistic super arctic will reflect and then if you observe the eye you'll notice that it's all black versus the other picture that i showed you before the eye was brownish um, so it'll give you a dark eye if you add the super arctic that's basically the super arctic giving it the dark eye and then you'll have a black eyed white snake a black eyed leucistic basically and here in this picture, we have a side-by-side -side comparison. The one on the left, you it's a normal leucistic, uh, visual uh, leucistic. And the one on the right is the super arctic that we just saw. So you can tell um, that the super arctic changes the color of the eye. Um, it'll give it a different translucent scale coloration. So I don't know too much about ball pythons, but I did a little bit of research. And in ball pythons, you have what's called a blue-eyed leucistic. So again, it's a visual uh, white snake that has a blue eye. And the only way to, uh, to achieve this uh, particular uh, visual snake is one of the most common ways is by breeding Mojave to lesser. Um, of course, they have to have the, the leucistic gene in them. Um, so if you breed that, you're able to possibly get uh, a blue eyed. But again, I don't keep ball pythons. I just really enjoy that the ball python community has a blue-eyed lucy which uh, aspires me that the hognose community will one day also be able to produce uh, a blue-eyed lucy because a lot of this stuff can be extrapolated over to our hobby if anyone has more information please feel free to leave it in the comments i've also heard that a lot of people uh, do mojave lesser and butter uh, just to safeguard the chances of possibly getting uh, a blue-eyed lucy so the cost of a ball python leucistic is anywhere from 350 to 500 dollars so i pulled up a uh, morph market for hognose snakes for sale leucistic in particular in the u.s and canada market uh, we see there a couple visuals for 4,000 males back then in 2021 you could have got into a leucistic project for 8,000 if you were lucky maybe seven grand uh so so now you know uh females they're a little bit uh, priced higher maybe going for five thousand for for a female visual other than that you got your 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 classic males going for two grand a thousand eleven hundred double hit lucy albino uh, sixteen hundred hit lucy's two thousand female just for a hit lucy so prices are holding up pretty good especially if you if you get yourself you know a hit lucy to a visual lucy then you could possibly everything will be 100 percent hit lucy uh half of it will be a visual at the very lowest uh people are selling heads for 500 you have a picture on the third picture on the on the new row you'll see jmg selling a male for 900 you'll be selling something for for about 600 700 for a hit a hit classic male so that's not bad, especially, especially considering that it's a normal with a with one recessive gene. So it's it's definitely worth investing. There you'll see an Arctic hit Lucy, which I recommend that you if you're gonna invest in another gene, um, yeah, you're gonna pay a little bit more, but um, it's worth it because of the of the super Arctic that I showed you. So if you can go ahead and pick yourself a, up a Arctic hit Lucy or or you know two of those so that way you could possibly get get a super arctic leucistic uh change the eye color and those were going for 1600 1400 so that's a very good deal um you have one from from rostral reptiles 
uh, albino, Arctic albino, so a three grand. So they're holding up their value, especially with the Arctic gene that's able to manipulate the eye color, the translucent scales. If you're going to invest in it now, uh, I would be looking towards an Arctic, an Arctic, uh, super Arctic. Yeah, and I know not everyone can spend $4,000 on a visual leucistic snake. Um, uh, even 200 to uh, even 300 is a lot of money 500 nowadays is a lot of money that could be invested in use for other things um but if 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 you can i'd be looking at the arctic leucistic um because it, it's initially going to give you a return on your money and just back up your investment like if you are planning to get an arctic lucy to an arctic hit lucy and um, then go ahead and back up your investment and get a, a hit lucy to a hit lucy so that way you have that the uh, plan B in case plan A doesn't work. And uh, so that way not all your investment is gone because the worst thing that can happen is you know losing out your whole investment because expect the worst ex expect the worst because um in reality we're dealing with animals and you have to be willing to to lose what you're what you're able to lose. But the reward is high, you know, with the high risk comes a high reward. Um, yes, they are still worth it, and I don't see them uh, really going anywhere for the next ten years. So go ahead and invest in. I don't. I don't have leucistic, but I. I am very, very uh, determined to get an Arctic Lucy to an Arctic hit Lucy or something like that, uh, because I, I. I do appreciate that it's a single recessive gene that allows you to get a very unique animal. And I think they're going to be very, very high demand uh, for many years to come. Yeah, prices are going to come down, uh, but they're still going to be uh, more expensive than your classic uh, het, albino, than your your normal wild type, het, whatever gene. Um, they're going to hold a lot of value because they're going to be high in demand. The second point that we can observe is there is a lot to observe in genetics. So we're really at the beginning stage. Um, it's just it takes one person to be determined and to get lucky and 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 find a, a, a new discovery in the leucistic and it could be you it could be me and i think it's a very good opportunity to be invested in this gene and to discover a lot of a lot of things and play with genetics and see how 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 it goes out and how it plays out last but not least every good uh, breeder needs to have a leucistic gene in their collection it's very it's very majestic it's very so i wouldn't be afraid of investing in lucy um i don't think i don't think uh, it's going anywhere for any time soon so uh, i hope you guys like this video let me know your thoughts and comments in the section below i'm really eager to see what you think about it and uh, yeah have a safe uh, have a safe day everybody thank you for stopping by and watching the video uh, see you guys